Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Hewell Hauser, and here we are on a beautiful, sunny Thursday morning. It's about 1030. We're here in Glendale, 1607 West Glen Oaks Boulevard in Glendale, to be exact. We're standing in front of Larry Larson's music store and here is Larry Larson right here right and we met the other night we were having I was having dinner at one of the classic restaurants in Glendale right. called Damon's it's been here forever you came over to the table and said what actually I came over I recognized you and I said would you be interested in buying me a Mai Tai <laughs> And you said no. So I says, well, then why don't you come by my music store and see all my old instruments? That's exactly the way it happened. I didn't buy you the Mai Tai, right. no. but I did come by because you said that this music store is a classic place here in Glendale. Right, exactly, exactly. Been here for 46 years. I'm a living legend in my own mind. All right. And we're going to find some neat things inside. I hope so. No telling what we'll find in there. There's a lot of stuff in there, you'll. All right, a lot I'm, of stuff. I'm accepting this on faith, on faith that this is going to be worth our trip over here to Glendale. We hope so. But you know how I lie about the Mai Tai, so who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> All right, let's go inside. Larry Larson's Music Store in Glendale. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Well, look what catches your eye right off the bat here. The violins. Right, right, right. Violins. The one on the end is the viola. They're a little bit bigger. They look the same as the violin. We, and we go from full size down to the little buggers. And I'm looking over here. What is this? This is a gong. You hit that and you have a desire to eat Chinese food. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> so you have... Right off the bat, it's easy to tell what it, you got. That I'm practicing. If I, in case I go to heaven, you know, I, I'm gonna plan to practice up. Now wait a minute. What are these? Rain sticks. Turn them upside down and ah. people so make music with those. Well, I don't know how much music you can make if you sit outside your window. You think it was raining? Wow. What is this? This isn't a musical instrument. Udo drum from Africa. You play this, just you actually cup it and oh, wow. And accordions. accordions. Now those are your instruments. That's my instrument. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> What's the story on these? Uh, the older ones I used in the uh, Godfather movies and things like that. Whenever they wanted a grouchy, fat old man playing accordion, they called me. So that's what happened. So you've been in a lot of movies and TV movies, shows and things. TV shows. Worked with quite a few people. Lucille Ball, uh, Goldie Hawn. I was the singing intern on uh, Marcus Welby. Wow. Right? Yeah, I had a lot of fun. And did you always play a musician? Right. Always a musician. So this store is just kind of a front for you as an actor, right? Well, maybe. Maybe. There was a lot of times I should have been here and I wasn't here. So, you know. Well, who is here? These right. guys are over here working on drumsticks. Howdy, fellas. I'm Hewell Hauser. How you doing? Your name? Uh, Rusty Palmer. Nice to meet you. Dean Uproka. Nice to meet you, Mr. Hauser. Now, what kind of people come in the store and what do they want? Well, we get all sorts of people coming into the store, different places, and usually they want from picks to expensive guitars to orchestra instruments to violas. So it's just the basic range of musical instruments. Are they musicians, or do they come in just to walk around and look at the play? For the most part, they're musicians. Uh, then there's that little percent in the back that just come around to look at the place. That's what we are today. We're just here to look around. We have, I don't, well, Louie actually has a little bit of musical ability. I have no musical ability at all. So the gong is about the extent of what you're going to hear from me okay, today. Okay. But you're used to that, aren't you? I'm used to that. A lot of looky loos. All right. You may find a person or two laying around around here someplace if we, you know. Get... All right. We're looky loose. Thanks, okay. fellas. All right. Now, where are we going? Oh, my gosh. Look, this is like a, a museum or something. Yeah, You've got a little bit of everything. A little in here. bit of everything. A little bit of everything. We've got cellos. We've got uh, 
Chicken eggs, we've got... Uh, why do you what have... What are we doing with chicken eggs here? Why do you have chicken eggs? Actually, it's a good point there. People actually use these uh, as... Well, not often, but they use them. <laughs> really? Wow. And if I get mad at somebody, I throw them at them. So. Now, look at all this up here. What is all this? Oh, some of these things, he'll, they've given me banjos. or some Mideastern instruments, Zernas, uh, an old collector item guitar. Uh, musicians would recognize an old C melody sax. Right here. Right. They don't make those anymore, do they? No, they've discontinued those. And what is this thing over here? This is what we call a Chinese bell tree. And uh, in fact, if you run that stick up and down over there, you people might recognize where that sound came from. What that was, was the theme start to Charlie's Angels. Oh, wow. I always just heard that little sound. What is this called? Chinese bell tree. A Chinese bell tree. Bell tree. Man, and there's bugles and oh, Irish look at your bugle collection and, here. And we've got some dumbbacks. We've what? got a an old Model A Ford uh, Jack there. I don't know what that's doing. <laughs> I don't even know how to tune that thing. <laughs> and now over here you got cymbals. And a hold, you've got a, a double bass. Double bass that's, right here. Right, that's the the big one. What is this? That's a, a gyro. That's a true gourd, which uh, they tell me you had a lot of musical talent, so I'll, I'll let you try it. What, what do you do here? <laughs> just rub it? Right, just. Is that it? That's what do crickets it, do. Do it the correct way. Well, that's the correct way. <laughs> Not something you'd, you know, make a whole orchestra out of, but it works well in the Latin, Latin music. Another gourd, that, and you can use that that way, or hold it and... These are all hand beads and... Now, are these uh, Middle Eastern or African? No, or? these are African. Boy, African these are... Latin stuff. Oh, look at this stuff. Can I pick this up? Anything you want. I'm afraid to... No, you can't hurt anything. What's the story on this? Uh, oh, look, what is that made of? That's what they tell me running around over in Arizona, out in the desert. This is the back of an armadillo. Oh and they use those to actually to, to uh, what is put this the backs on an instrument. This is what they call a charango. A charango? Yeah, uh, Mexican more or less instrument. And uh, there's are... your Greek instrument, the bazooki. Can you play this, no, or are you just no, an accordion no, no, guy? I'm just an accordion player. <laughs> Maybe a little guitar, but uh, very little. Wow. Yeah, a little Greek. So nice you really right? do have drums. Oh, these are beautiful. What are these? Why that's just, you, that's you a have, top uh, one. The bells. For, you have the bells? Five? Yeah, here comes Santa now. I hear them. No. And you've got, are these, can we pick this up? Sure. Boy, this is beautiful. Beautiful. Right. Oh, these That's are right. heavy too. Yeah, That's made out of uh, ceramics. Ceramics. I have to stop or it'll rain. So, so you have a lot of <laughs> of uh, drums in here. A lot of drums. Let's look in here. What's in this door, Louis? Ah. We'll follow you in there. What's in the back room back here? Oh, but just more stuff that. Uh, so this is like a Drums showroom for people to come in and buy instruments. That's that's really nice. This is a uh, a British in the War of Independence. They use those drums. Wow! Uh, this they is still make of... the same drum. They still make exactly the same drum. So this is kind of your drum room in here. Right, drums. Well, you, stands, know, you still bags, got a little bit of everything. A lot of rental instruments. So that, people uh, come here to rent we, things we as rent well. We rent instruments. Yeah, violins. Trumpets, saxophones. Now I'm kind of turned around. We came in here. Did we come in here by accident, or is there another? How do we get around through here? Well, I have a bass teacher over on the other side over there, and then we have an upstairs. We can. All right. Well, let's walk back through here. I don't know whether Louie can even get through here with all this stuff. Look at this thing. Actually, surprising enough, yeah, it's sort of interesting. The guys walked in the other day with this, another old C melody sax. 
with what we call a curved neck. And I was amazed that, that, that the name on here is Wurlitzer, you know, that made jukeboxes and whatever. Evidently, he made saxophones at one time. I didn't even know that. So how old But is there's this 100 guy? years of patina on here. In fact, we took a little polish. And now, what will you do with this? Did he leave this here for you to repair, or has he, no, he got I just he sold it, it to you? Just for the, for and what are you going to do with it? Just Who knows? <laughs> Maybe stand on a corner somewhere with a cup or something, you know. I mean, oh, look at this. This is nice, too. Again. Uh, yeah. Wind chimes, they call them. Boy, the sights and the sounds that you have in yeah. here. Yeah. All right, let's walk through okay. here. Boy, this is, now do you all allow people to do what we just did, walk around and, and hit everything like we just did? Uh, usually we do, yes. And because they, they want to, don't they? Yes, they do. They like looking at all the very interesting items around the store. So you're used to hearing these kind of sounds. Yes, we are. <laughs> well, you're surrounded. Let's hear what one of these. What are, what are these right here? These are Indian bells, uh -huh. straight out of India. And um, each of them, if you can hear it, it has a different tone. They're made. You hit it. Ah. They're made out of solid copper and I'm pretty sure aluminum too. Wow. Very smart boy. <laughs> he knows more than I do. <laughs> All right, now we're walking back through the. You've got a whole guitar display here. More eggs. Of more course. eggs, right? Chickens did well this week. And what's back in? Well, here? this is one of the teaching rooms, Hugh. Uh, this well, is there's our, somebody back here. Yeah, yeah. Student base teacher. Ha! Huh. Since he's yeah, a yeah. student base teacher, we. Hugh Hauser. Andrew Palmer. Now, what are you doing back here? Is he supposed to be back here? We make him practice, you know, yes. make him what's get better. The, what's the deal back here? Stand up so we can see uh, you. There we go. <laughs> are you back here practicing? Just practicing, waiting for a student. So. Oh, so you're a teacher? Yes. Now, how yeah. does that work? Your students will come in here. This is a, is this a soundproof room here? Kind of soundproof? <laughs> Pretty good. And Double you'll walls. close the door and just work with them for, for what, an hour, hour to, half, half hour at a time? Yeah, half hour. And where do you get your students? <laughs> by luck, by luck. But uh, uh, many refer I get referrals a lot. So, so you he's in here teaching mm -hmm. on a regular basis. On a regular basis, he works the store and he also teaches. You know, what do you got about 10, 11 students? I, I got about, about that. Yeah. Can you play something for us sure. real quick? Sure. I mean, I want to see how good you are before we walk off oh, here. Okay. Let me move this out of the way. <laughs> Very good, very good. You like that? We'll leave you back here in the soundproof okay. room. Thank you. <laughs> we'll just okay. leave him, close the door, and Don't move on. Come out, tell you practice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we've now come outside. Where are you taking us now, Larry? Well, I'm going to let you meet Uncle Harut. Uncle Harut. Uncle Harut. He's the woodwind, sax, clarinet repairman, brass. He oh, look, instruments. you've got your own little repair thing well, going here. You heard a little old shoemaker. This oh, is yeah. a little old repairman. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, how you doing? Hi. I'm Huel Hauser. Okay, I'm Harut. Nice to meet you. And your okay. your position here is to do what? Yes, it's not a little bit, but uh, it's okay. I'm doing my uh, job. What is your job? My job is to, to repair anything. Uh huh. I mean, would be the instruments. Flutes, clarinets, saxophones, trumpets, brass instruments also. Now, is this what you've done all your life? No, I have done too much things, too many things, but this is the end. This, this is the last one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I was a musician in, in the same time. I just learned to repair the instruments on my, on my own instrument. Ah, and what so, is your instrument? What yeah. do you play? I played the clarinet first, then the ah. saxophone. Oh, well, here's a clarinet right here. Yeah. I'm repairing it already. Is that your clarinet or somebody no. else? My clarinet is a special one. Oh, excuse me. Yes, it's, me. A, it's a very good one. This is an Well, clarinet. you're working on something. Let me get over here so Louie can get a look yeah. at it. What is it you're doing here? I am trying to adjust this slide. It's OK right now. On a trombone? Yeah. Ah. Like this. 
Oh, I see. So you're just kind of working back here in your own little workshop back here? Yeah. Nobody bothers you back here? Sometimes uh, Larry is bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, do you bother him? But it's only it's when okay. he asks for a raise. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Oh, nice okay. to meet you, sir. You're welcome, sir. Wow, this is like, this is like almost a lost art, isn't it? Well, we lost them once, but, <laughs> but no, it's uh, I mean, good don't... repairmen are hard to find. Yeah, you don't, I mean, look at this, Louie, down here. I mean, this is like a, a picture out of a time past. Time past, almost. You know, you find he's got all the pads, all the, everything you need to repad clarinets, saxophones, sopranos, bass clarinets, altos, tenors. Right here on the plug. Clarinets, right here. Right. Well, nice to meet you, sir. Okay. Have a good well, day. We won't bother you anymore today. No, you, anytime you can come here and uh, can't bother me because I like people. Uh, and uh, almost the people that are interested in the musical instruments, they are my, my friends. Good. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye. Uncle. Wait a minute. That's a bagpiper. I hear bagpipes. I hear now, you. Boy, this is loud in here. It sure does, yeah. Boy, my ears are ringing. Obviously, this is a bagpipe class going on what in here. Who was that, you said? <laughs> what? Come here, Larry. This is part of what you got going on up here? That's, what I, that's why I put him up here, though. <laughs> oh, away he, from he's everybody. He's not allowed else. to be downstairs. That's right. What's the story? You teach bagpipe yeah, we lessons. we teach bagpipes from here. Um, and uh, we teach all ages, you know, kids through adults. And uh, we got the biggest room in the whole house obviously, because it's very loud, and um, and we need space for marching and, uh, and oh, practice. Oh, so you actually march around when you're... Yeah, it's for, for preparing the um, the students for competitions. They have to march in the competition. Now, your students here, your name is... Sean. Let me shake hands with you, Sean. And who is this? Patrick. Are you all brothers? Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> now, how long have you been learning the bagpipe? Um, about three years. Is it hard to learn? Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. You, need, you need a lot of wind for it. Well, boy, you need a lot of wind, that's yeah. for sure. And what is this you're playing on right here? This is a practice channer. Um, this is what you learn when you're first starting to play bagpipes, and you memorize songs on this, and then you play them on the bagpipes. So you're playing the pipe without the bag? Uh, yeah. Can you play us a little something? Let's hear what that sounds like. <laughs> So that gets them into the idea of playing it. Right. Well, they, they, what they do is they learn the scale and they learn all the embellishments that go with bagpipe. And, um, and so that by the time they're ready for, um, to, get on, uh, to get onto the bagpipe itself, they already know the melody of the, of the tunes. And it's something less that they have to learn when they get on there. Because this is difficult to keep the instrument going and get good tone out of the, the pipe itself and the technique of, of the continuous tone that comes out of it. You've got a great accent. You've got to be from Scotland. I am indeed from Scotland, yeah. <laughs> Where are the kilts? Um, not when I'm teaching, you know. Oh, okay. Just, just when you're... When I'm playing, yeah, when I'm performing, I normally wear a kilt. Is there a big interest in bagpipes these days? Um, yeah, there's a big interest in... Uh, in fact, in Los Angeles, I play with one of the, uh, the premier band from the United States. Um, really? We're called the L.A. Scots, yeah, and we compete in, um, in Glasgow every year. In fact, we're taking off in two weeks to the World Championships again. Wow. Yeah. Representing L.A.? Uh, well, we actually are representing the United States. They were the, the number one American band over there and the highest, the most successful uh, American band in history. We placed 11th place in the world last year, and, um, and this year we're hopefully going to do a lot better than that. And that's what you all are shooting for someday, yeah, right, fellas? Yeah. next generation of players. Absolutely. And if you win... Larry Larson will take all the credit all the for credit. it because it all happened here at your music store. Right, exactly. I want all the credit, John. All, all the right. credit. I don't. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's end up with a little bit of. Boy, I wish I. I hey, I didn't mean to be rude about the sound, but it's in this room. It just. 
echo. Well, the problem is people keep thinking that this is uh, an instrument, you know, when they hear it inside, it, this is an outdoor instrument. It was designed to be played outside and people go, you know, that's so loud. And, and normally when people say, can you just turn that down a bit? I go, sure. And I pretend I have a little volume control in here and, <laughs> and they're happy. All right, turn it down a little bit and let's hear you play. <laughs> Jam session or what's going on here? Well, this is three grumpy old men. We <laughs> sometimes call Larry Larson trio, but lately three grumpy old men seems to fit the image. And through the magic of television, you are playing in exactly the same spot it's that the bagpipers were playing in, which just shows the range of music that you have going on here. We can do anything, you <laughs> <laughs> Now, I know, I, I've seen the pictures. You started playing the accordion at a very young age. Yeah, I was six months old. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, I was ten no. years old. Yeah. Ten years old. Guy come around the door, knocking at the door, selling accordion lessons. Really? So I started playing accordion. I think when I was on about 11 years old, I was sitting on Lawrence Welk's knee. Really? For one of his shows, playing accordion. Now, I've also seen in your scrapbook lots of pictures of you playing baseball. So baseball. was there this... Uh, Always back and forth, sports and music. Music won out. Yeah, and I'm sure you're glad it did. I'm sure it did. I'm glad. Now, there's another picture of you with a group called the Larry Larson Quartet. Right. I had quartets, trios. We built up to five or six pieces, whatever the occasion called for. But over the years, it narrowed down to a three-piece trio, Larry Larson Trio or the Larry Larson now, Quartet. Now, these guys weren't in the quartet, were they? No. I think we've been together about 30 years. So you all are new together, just 30 years. 30 years new. Your name, sir, is? Spider Webb. Now, I've seen, <laughs> I've looked at all your scrapbooks. Your, your background included what kinds of things? Well, rock and roll, jazz, country, you name it, I've done it. But you did, you had a couple of claim to fames, too. Yeah, Alley Oop, the record Alley Oop with the Hollywood Argyles, I did that. And uh, did a, uh, a session once with Blind Track for Wipeout. Really? Yeah. So you've been around. Yes, sir. And what's it like playing with these guys? <laughs> grumpy old men. <laughs> <laughs> and here's our third grumpy old man. Your name is? Bill Maloof. And the pictures I've seen, you were playing with Trini Lopez for a number of years. Yes, I did that for five years. It was great. Was so that on a TV? On everything. Really? Every, yes. We played the uh, Playboy After Dark show, and Trini had a special of his own. and. And we went around the world playing. It was great. And then there were pictures of you with some program you did around the world with Chubby Checker. And uh, yes, we went to a full Australian tour with the Chubby Checker Bobby Rydell show with Del Shannon. And uh, I was backing up an unknown who they uh, named Queen of the Twist. They didn't know down there that she wasn't a queen of anything. But it was it was a fun a fun trip. It was six weeks. Well, now how how does that compare? A world tour compare? with being in the practice room at Larry Larson's music shop here in Glendale. Music is music. It no is, matter where it? you play it, as long as you're with people you like. Yeah, and you like these two guys. I obviously. didn't say that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I mean, I want to, I mean, there, there is a, a, a message through all this. You've taken us through your music shop. Right. We've heard different types of music today. 
we've seen all these different instruments, and there really is kind of a universal theme going here, isn't there? Music's a lot of fun Yeah. for everybody. There's a lot of things for everybody. Yeah. Well, you've been open for how many years? 46. This shop has been here for 46 years. You know how long I've been here? <laughs> <laughs> Since Moby Dick was a minnow, you know. <laughs> He's been waiting to use that. I know, he I used that. Idea. He used that on me at Damon's restaurant the other night. He said, "You know, I want you to come see my shop. You know how long it's been there mm. since Moby Dick was a minnow." He stole it from me. He stole it. <laughs> I'm his new writer. Well, it's a wonderful place. You can come here to buy instruments, to sell instruments, to have instruments repaired, to take lessons, rent, to rent to do all kinds of things. Who knows, you might even be able to come up to the, to the room and hear the three grumpy, three old, grumpy men old men play, or the bagpipes, or the bass that we heard downstairs. All these wonderful instruments. It's all very much, this is really a throwback. There are not many of these stores around left anymore, are there? No, not many, not many. So you're <laughs> hanging in there. Hanging in there. I could go any minute, so. <laughs> well, we're, gl we're glad we gave you your shot at TV before you go. Thank you. Bill. Thank you I very really much. I really it's it. been a wonderful day. We're going to end with our credits by hearing, what are you all going to play? A little Brazil, a little Amor Amor. Yeah. All right, okay. let's get into it. This has been a great day. Thank you all very much for having us over here. I'm glad you came over to the table and introduced yourself Me at too. Damon's. Me too. Thank you. Visiting with Huell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.